Welcome to my parish of St. Bernard in Mill Basin. There's great food and a lot of fun to come, so don't go away. Hello everyone, I'm Monsignor Jamie and welcome to Breaking Bread. We're here in my parish of St. Bernard's in Mill Basin. And at the end of July every year, we honor Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We have a great big feast, there's a lot of fun, and a lot of games, and good food. So let's get going. Good to see you, good, very good. Very good. <laughs> How are you? I'm here with Lucy the Third. Yeah. Are you Lucy's granddaughter? The famous Lucy's of all the feasts? Yeah. Okay. Now, the Zeppelin's here. Tell me, what goes into making a Zeppelin? A lot of sweat and tears. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears, yeah. huh? Why does it have a hole in it? Because they're supposed to be like donuts. Oh, like donuts. Yeah. Okay. So now, how many of these Zeppelin's do you think you sell in one night? At least a thousand. About a thousand. Yeah. So everyone that comes to a feast tries one out, right? Everyone. So how many do you get in a bag? Six or five. Six? Can I pack? Can I pack them up? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what do we do? Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. So That's part. The powdered sugar is really what makes it. Yeah. You want to always get extra. Extra powdered sugar. Okay. Can I shake them? Yeah. And then they're ready. Then they're ready. I don't know if I'm ready. And that is good. When you come to a feast, you always have to have a Zeppelin. I'm here with Jimmy Mazzafaro, who's been running this feast for over 11 years here at uh, St. Bernard's. And tell me a little bit about the uh, tradition and why you brought this feast to our parish. It's a tradition for me to live. We love it to bring it over here for all our friends, with the community, and to make it. Believing what we used to have, and we still keep them alive. And that, what town in Italy are you from? Uh, Calabria. Calabria. And yes. this feast uh, took place in Calabria. Yes. Even over here, we go around Borgon Beach. We try to copy what we used to do there. And like I say, thank God the neighborhood, and thank God the church, and thank God Monsignor Jemison. Well, as long as I'm here, we'll be doing this feast. All the members from uh, JS Marina Social Club, they're happy to do that and we're doing with real pressure. With it's so important to bring a lot of these traditions from Italy, from other countries here, to keep up the traditions and to pass these traditions on to our children. And this feast does that. You know, a lot of people say, why do they come to the feast? There's food, there's fun. But truly, we come because to pay homage, exactly. homage to a saint or a tradition. And in this case, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And uh, hopefully, this year's feast will be very successful again. And uh, I want to say thank you for the church that give us the opportunity to do this. You're welcome. You and on Sunday we'll have the mass and then we'll have the procession with Our Lady. Well, you're doing a good job, Jimmy. Thank you. And God very bless much. you. All we yeah, have to do is pray for good, good weather. We ah, pray to Our Lady Aubusar. for good Aubusar. weather. Aubusar. Thank you. We're here at one of the games in our bazaar, and we're here with Fran and Maria. Now, tell me a little bit about this wine booth. What do you win here? The white dot of your number, then you win Monsignor. Monsignor? Oh, is this a special wine? Yes, it is. It's very special. <laughs> Does anyone win this wine? We've had a few that we've had many winners. Maria, tell, me tell us why we're having this bazaar. We're trying to um, raise money. For what? To uh, rebuild the gym here at St. Mark. So not only do we pay homage to uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, we do raise a, a few dollars to renovate our gym. We have a lot of games of chance, there's a lot of food, there's a lot of games, it's a lot of fun. So I'm here with Lucy of Lucy's Sausage, and any feast you go to in all of New York, you have to go to Lucy's Sausage. 
And who is this? Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, how long have you been doing this? 48 years. 48 years? When did you start it? Five? Six. Six. <laughs> now, how many feasts a year do you go to? Uh, I do about 10 to 12. Like 10 that. to 12 every year, mostly yeah. in the summertime. Yes, from April to October. Now, which is the best feast that you go to? This one. This one, of course. <laughs> I hate her to say that. I mean, you go to San Gennaro, yes. you go to downtown Brooklyn, yes. Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I go to uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, I go to St. Rosalia. St. Rosalia. Uh, San Gennaro. And then I go to St. Anthony. St. Anthony. You hit all the big ones. Yes. Wouldn't you say that feasts are a part of what makes up New York? Yes, it's I mean, the summer wouldn't go by without going right. to a feast somewhere. Right. And it keeps yeah. tradition. That's great. Well, thank you for coming to our feast, the best feast in Brooklyn. Yes. <laughs> but we will uh, try out some of your sausage. Okay. You want to make me one? Yes, sir. Okay. Sweet or hot? I like it hot. Onions? Onions and peppers. Good. Good? I don't know. I didn't taste it yet. No, I mean enough onions. Oh, yeah. Let me taste it. You want a sweet sauce? It's hot, but it's good. How many of these do you eat a year? I don't need any. <laughs> the first one of the year and the last one, and that's it. Make sure next year you stop by at St. Bernard's Feast in honor of a Lady Mount Carmel and taste one of Lucy's sausage. It's the best around. If you think this looks good, wait till you try some of my barbecuing. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. We're here in the kitchen preparing for our barbecue today and we have a lot of dishes that are out of the ordinary. One thing about grilling and barbecuing, you can put together anything you like and most of the times I do. Whenever I go out to eat, I try a dish and I see what I like about it. I go home and I experiment and I put it all together and create something very new. So here we go. The first dish we're going to prepare today is a chicken kebab and it's kind of like a Greek style chicken because it has a lot of garlic and oregano in it. And what I did here was I marinated uh, chicken cubes. I like to use white meat uh, breast chicken. And I cubed them up. And I put in here some lemon, some lime, some salt, pepper, garlic, oregano, and uh, a little bit of olive oil. So I have this marinated for about, uh, I would say, about three or four hours. And um, all we have to do is put these together on the skewers. And I usually put about six or so pieces but a lot of times when you put these together, when you're barbecuing, people share and they can take a, as much as they like. Okay, so here we have chicken marinade. I'll put that in the refrigerator so we're ready to cook. It'll be nice and fresh. So our next dish here is a three bean salad. And this too is a variation of a couple of different salads, bean salads that I've had. So I have here some chickpeas, just throw these in the bowl. And these are canned beans. I rinsed them off to get the vinegar taste out of them. Some black beans and some red kidney beans. I have some red onion here. Throw in some red onion. <laughs> throw it all in. Some feta cheese. And I buy this in the store. I buy the uh, crumbled feta cheese. And then I roasted some pine nuts, some pignoli nuts. Toasted them for a few minutes. Just mix this up a little bit. Just mix this all together. And what makes this dish so tasty is fresh cilantro. I, I don't like to use the dried. I think the fresh herbs always taste much better. You know, a lot of times people dice it up or they try to dice it with a knife. The best way to do this is just with a scissor. Put this cilantro in here. Mix this all together. And then I have here some fresh lime. And really this is the dressing. It's the cilantro and the lime that makes this salad. And of course the feta cheese has some nice flavor to it. Mix this around 
and then a little fresh pepper. And some salt. Okay. Mix that up. And this too, this dish also can be prepared, prepared ahead of time. It's ready to go and I'll put this in the refrigerator. What's nice about these dishes is that after you prepare them and you let them sit a little bit, the flavors all mend and blend together. This next dish is an unusual dish. It's grilled little neck clams. And what makes this unusual is that you never hear about grilled clams. And it's a very easy dish. And I have to say, this dish I did pick up. I went to a barbecue once and they were serving these. And I said, how'd you do that? And it's so simple. All you do is you get little neck clams, you clean them, put them in the refrigerator. When you're ready to grill them, you just take them out, put them on the grill. As they cook, they open, and as they're opening, all you have to do is baste them. Now, the marinade that I make for this here is a little lemon juice and olive oil. I have some olive oil in here. Put some fresh lemon into the olive oil. Don't worry about the pits going into here because we're just going to be basting the clams with this, with a brush, so the pits we don't have to worry about. A little bit of the pulp gets in there, that's okay also. I have some fresh basil here. Put a little chopped garlic, I should say a lot of chopped garlic. Mix that together. Hot pepper, red crushed red pepper. Make them a little spicy. Mix that together. And all we have to do is, as I said, when we grill them, I'll show you in a few minutes, when they open on the grill, all you do is baste them with this marinade and it's delicious. So in the meantime, this can stay out, but I'm gonna put the clams in the refrigerator until we're ready to use them. Our next three dishes are very popular dishes. Everywhere you go, you get sliders. And today I have three sliders that I'm gonna be preparing. First is a seafood slider, then a beef slider, and then fresh tuna sliders. I just poached some shrimp. I got a large shrimp, and I poached them, and I just cleaned them, and I cut them in little cubes. I have here crab meat and lobster meat mixed together, and I just added a little bit of breadcrumbs in there and I mix that together. It's almost like a um, stuffing for a flounder or a lobster. And I mix that all together. So we have our seafood in here. The next thing that I throw in is some fresh basil. Mix that around. We have here some fresh lemon juice. Mix that around. And what really makes this dish, I say, is the av are the avocados. What I do is I have two avocados here, and I just, what I do is after I half them, I cut them in half and I just cube them so that when you take them out, they kind of just come right out of the shell. So if I cut in half, I make a few cuts this way and that way. A lot of times people peel the avocado and they can't get it out. And this way, it's already cubed, so when you put the spoon in, they kind of come right out. The trick my mother taught me. In this dish, I do use some mayonnaise to bind it together for our seafood sliders. 
And you can say this is a variation of a lobster roll. If you ever had a lobster roll, it's the lobster meat with some mayonnaise and some salt and pepper. But this is kind of like a variation of that with the avocado and the crab meat and the lobster meat with the shrimp. Put this in the refrigerator. Next slider is a beef slider. I have some beef patties here and this is a very simple dish. And all I do is grill them. I put a little white cheddar cheese on top. Once that melts and they're done, I take them off the grill. I put a little dab of guacamole and I put a, a slice of bacon. Today I'm using uh, turkey bacon. I think it's a little healthier for us. We're very health conscious today. And um, I like it uh, also because it doesn't have as much fat in it. And then there's a little bit more meat uh, in the bacon. So that is our beef guacamole cheddar cheese sliders. The next dish is a, which I love, tuna sliders. And this is a very simple dish. I just went to the fish store and I went and I had the uh, two slices of tuna cut and I had them cube them to, just to fit the uh, slider roll. I just seasoned them with a little salt and pepper like I did the uh, beef patties. And all I do is I grill them, both sides. I just, you know, black and blue. I just sauteed some onions and I sauteed this with a little olive oil, butter, and a little sweet vinaigrette. And then I put a little bit of wasabi on top on a little slider roll and we have our tuna sliders. So here we have our three sliders. We have our seafood sliders. We have our beef sliders with guacamole and cheddar cheese. And we have our tuna sliders with sweet onions and some wasabi. So don't go away. We're going outside to do some grilling. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. We're here now at our grill and this is the hard part. The easy part is the preparation. The hard part is grilling. Because, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, anyone can grill, I'll barbecue. That's not the case. Grilling is more difficult than cooking in the kitchen. Because you have one grill, it's very difficult to regulate the heat. In the kitchen, you have the microwave, you have the stove top, you have the oven. There are many different variations that you can use. Out here, you have one grill. So when you're grilling, the first thing you have to know is what takes the longest. In our case today, it will be the chicken. So I'll take out our chicken kebabs and I'm going to put them on one side of the grill. I always like to start the grill low. You can always raise it. You start on a high grill and it burns, you can't take it away. Put our chicken kebabs on. Now some people say that when you're using a skewer made of wood, you can soak it in water so it doesn't burn. I never do that, but I guess some people do. Makes them happy. Maybe it works, who knows? The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on our clams. As I said, these are just clams. I clean them. Once again, make sure your grill is low. You can always raise it. And these you serve as an appetizer. So once these are done, while you're grilling the rest of your dishes, you can go around and pass these hors d'oeuvres around. One thing about barbecuing or grilling is that everyone can gather around while you're cooking. A lot of times when you prepare a meal at home in the kitchen, people are in the living room, the dining room, the den, and you're stuck in the kitchen. But when you're grilling outside, people come around, they have a drink, they watch you grill, they put their two cents in, they all tell you how to do it. I love when you're preparing something, they're all telling you a better way to do it. So I say, I just yes them to death. Put our clams out. And what's unique about these is that they will start to open. And once they open, we then start with our marinade. What I like to do with meat and all types of grilling is you start on a high flame. And what you do is you sear the outside so it seals in the juices, then you lower the flame. So I'm gonna put this up just a bit. So sear the outside. And then, as I said, cook on a low flame so that we don't burn them. So I'm gonna put this up a little higher. And as we can see here, 
our clams are starting to open. And what I say is they're opening their mouth, so give them something to eat. And once you start putting this on top of the clams, the marinade, it's going to pick up the flame. That's why you should keep this very low. Once that oil gets on the uh, fire, it's going to start flaming up. You should never leave a grill with anything on it because it can burn in a matter of seconds. Now if I close this for a minute so that the heat stays in, you'll see how quickly the clams will open. I smell all of that oregano and garlic. And I'm sure the people down the block do as well. Another minute or so, these clams will start open. They'll open all at once. Uh, chicken is doing. As I said, it's all white meat, so that's not going to take too long. While those are coming with my sliders on, I'm going to put these on the top because they're not that thick. And you can start browning them so then, and they're almost cooked, you can then throw them down. The whole key is to get everything off at the same time. That's the trick. It's not easy. Now, if the clam doesn't open, don't eat it. It's bad. Throw it away. And when in doubt, throw it out. So this marinade, I'm going to throw right on top. Now that our sliders are on, they're just about halfway cooked. And now we're going to sear the tuna. The tuna does not take long at all, so you want to put it on a very high flame. I'm just going to use this last side here. And as you notice, I put the tuna where the, sea, the seafood was, the clams. So you try not to mix the grill up too much between the meat and the fish. As you can see, the tuna turns right away. We just want to sear it on both sides. You do not want to overcook it. And it's nice if you keep it right in the same spot. This way when you turn it, you have the lines on there that make it look very good. Wow, look who's here. My friends just arrived. Just in time. We're ready to eat. Monsignor O'Toole, how are you? Good. good to see you. Father Elias, how are you? Good, Monsignor. Father Thomas, how's things in Poland? Everything is good. Getting ready for World Youth Day? Yes, I'm ready. We'll be there. Brooklyn will be there. So, so uh, I prepared some great dishes here today, and I hope you, uh, <laughs> you like them. Otherwise, I don't think you'll come back. So here we have our marinated grilled clams. We have our Tuna with sweet onions and wasabi, our marinated chicken, marinated with oregano and garlic, and we have our beef sliders with cheddar cheese and guacamole. If you would like to try some of these dishes, here are the recipes.
And if you have a recipe that you would like to share with us and have on our show, just send it to breakingbread at thesalesmedia.org. Unlike the hustle and bustle pressures of holiday dinners and gatherings, the summertime can allow you, your family and friends, to relax and enjoy more quality time together. The slow, masterful cooking style of barbecue allows vibrant flavor to be absorbed. It is similar to the slow down pace of the summer months. As we sit back and take it all in, barbecuing also allows the chef to be freed from the kitchen as the food preparation is brought outdoors and among the guests, making it a true event for all. Engaging in the different settings, such as a backyard, a park or campground, connects us back to the miracle of life and all that God provides for us. Sometimes this is difficult to realize when our food comes out of a box or off the shelves in a supermarket. Sometimes eating in the great outdoors helps us to realize the true gift that is creation and the nature that surrounds us. This is Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello asking that together we continue to build the church by devoting ourselves to the community, prayer, the teaching of the apostles, and the breaking of the bread. May God bless you.